Hello friends, it's Lisa and welcome to my bullet journal setup for the month of May. So with the exciting season three of Bridgerton on the horizon in May, it's coming out I think May 16th, I've just been so excited for the new season that I decided to make my bullet journal in May reflect that and do a Bridgerton theme. And I know that I said earlier this year and also like pretty much every single bullet journal setup that I filmed this year that I wanted to keep my monthly setups really simple. I didn't want to spend too much time on them and I've been doing well with that other than this month. This month I decided to challenge myself a little bit so for the kind of main title page I decided to replicate somewhat the Bridgerton house. And I say somewhat because I obviously didn't include every detail from the house. I wanted to include some things because I wanted it to be recognizable as the Bridgerton house, so I tried to include as many details as I could in a much more simplified drawing, and obviously the drawing is such a small scale as well, so I couldn't include everything. So it's definitely a simplified version, but there's still a lot of detail I feel like in this quick kind of sketch. Obviously I say quick because I didn't take too much time on every little detail detail, but it didn't necessarily take me the quickest amount of time. I definitely think this is the setup that has taken me the longest so far this year, but I am happy with how it came out. Obviously, this title page is a lot more detailed than normal. I feel like I've done, I have done a similar style to this before in my bullet journal. I think it was actually last May, which is kind of funny, but I replicated the castle that's in the Bejeweled music video by Taylor Swift, and so it's been a while since I've done this kind of style, so I wanted to do it again, but because it is so detailed, the the rest of the spreads throughout the month are a little bit more simple, but obviously this title page was a lot of fun to take the time to do it and to reference um, a certain picture of the Bridgerton house and kind of put that onto the page. So with the actual drawing, I did go before filming in with my pencil first to kind of do a rough outline of everything and all of the details so that when I went in with the fine liner, with the permanent marker, I would kind of have that outline there for me. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just taking one of my micron pens and outlining everything. And then once the outline is done, which did take quite a while, but once that is done, I do go in with some color markers, my Tombows, some mild liners, and color in the drawing as well. And it was really fun because in the show, in the Bridgerton show on the outside of the house there's a lot of greenery a lot of flowers and there are purple flowers that I'm not sure if it's lavender or something else I probably should know it might even say in the show I don't know but there's lots of purple flowers everywhere which was something that also inspired the rest of the spreads this month but it was really fun to add those details and add those floral details on the spread. I think it really makes it a little bit more recognizable as the Bridgerton house. But once the house is completely drawn and colored in, I just write May on the bottom in a simple script that I use in my bullet journal. I feel like every single month, it's like rare that I don't use this type of lettering in a monthly setup, but I wanted to keep everything around the house very simple. I didn't want it to take away from the drawing, but that is the entire title page. So while I finish up drawing this house, obviously like I said it did take me a little bit of time to do this. I thought we could just chat about Bridgerton season three. Are we excited? I'm excited. <laughs> As someone who has not read a lot of the Bridgerton books, I've only read the first one, so I don't really know a lot of what happens in all of the other books in the series and all of the other siblings' stories, so each season now I feel like it's just going to be a fun little surprise to see how it all plays out, but I'm so excited to see Colin and Penelope's story, and I'm just so excited to see all of the scenes that I feel like people have hinted at and some things that like the readers of the books know about and they've like talked about. I'm just excited to see it all play out and like the trailers and everything. Everything looks so good. Um, the actress who plays Penelope, the looks, the hair, the makeup, the dresses, she just looks absolutely stunning this season. So I'm so excited to see all of the looks. And also hear some of the music because something that Bridgerton does is that they play like more current music, but it's like done in a classical way. I think Snow on the Beach is going to be featured by Taylor Swift in this season. So of course, love that. Um, and just excited to hear those renditions of these more popular songs. And I'm just excited for the vibes. I'm excited to see other characters in the Bridgerton family. I'm excited to see anything to do with Anthony and Kate because I love them so much. Any little snippet we see of them. 
I will be screaming. <laughs> but yeah, I know I've said that I'm excited 50 million times in the last minute, but it's just true. I'm very excited for this new season. I'm not excited about the fact that they're splitting it up, like they're doing the first four episodes in May and then the last four are coming out in June. Don't love that I'm gonna have to wait. That is not a sleigh, but I think it'll be worth it. I contemplated just waiting until the last four episodes came out to just watch the whole thing, but I'm not gonna be able to, one, hold myself back because I'm excited about it, obviously, as I've said a thousand times, but two, I feel like I'm not gonna be able to avoid spoilers for the first half so I'm just gonna have to watch it when it comes out and go through the pains of waiting but I'm just looking forward to it regardless I think it's gonna be so good but yeah I would love to know if you are also excited about the new season of Bridgerton will you be tuning in I'd love to chat about anything about the new season down below in the comments but I think I have yapped on about the new season of Bridgerton long enough I will just let you watch me finish up the last little details of this title page before we move on to the calendar spread. So for the calendar page, of course, I'm just starting with the actual calendar, creating the boxes for the days of the month and getting that kind of boring actual functional part of the spread out of the way. I also go in with the purple marker to create the little circles for the days of the month. Like I said, I wanted to keep the rest of the spreads throughout the month more simple because obviously the title page did take me quite a long time to do and I obviously wasn't going to replicate that on every single page. We were not going to be doing that. So I decided to keep things a little bit more simple and just pull in some other things things uh, from the show or reminded me of the show. So like I was saying earlier, the like purple flowers, the lavender question mark, I could look it up, but I'm just not going to. The purple flowers that kind of show up throughout the Bridgerton show and are, you know, on the house and everything, I decided to include that kind of going across the top of the calendar page, which definitely is a more simple option, but it didn't take me any less time because I had to create all the little petals for the flowers and that did take me a little bit of time, even though it was a more simple drawing, it did still take some time. So I don't know. I'm not really good at making things easy for myself apparently um, but I do think it looks nice having those purple flowers going across the top and I also feel like it reminds me of a certain scene and certain like imagery from the show so I thought that that was really cool to include and I also decided to draw a little bee in the bottom corner as well just a little tie-in a little nod to the show as well but that's kind of it for the decorative aspects of the spread of course we have the calendar as well and the little notes section off to the right hand side and then that's really it for the calendar spread I wanted to keep it simple Simple, functional but also have those tie-ins to the theme and to the show and while we're here finishing up the spread I would love to know if there's any exciting things that you have going on in the month of May obviously I am looking forward to Bridgerton season three there's also my mom's birthday happening this month and just obviously Mother's Day and some things going on like that so those will be fun to celebrate but definitely let me know if you have anything you're looking forward to in the month of May So once the calendar page is done, we are moving on to my next couple of spreads. So on the left-hand side of this page, we are going to have my habit tracker. I have six habits that I track every single month. Sometimes I change it up, but I have been keeping the same six habits the past few months. And so I just create six boxes to represent the month. I create like a mini calendar of the month of May and I will just color in if I did that habit that day. But then to decorate the page a little bit more and bring the theme into this page, I once again draw those purple flowers hanging from the top of the page and I did look it up in between recording these voiceover clips they are wisteria flowers I couldn't stand not knowing especially if I was going to keep mentioning them throughout this video and throughout this setup so 
I looked it up. I now know it's not lavender. It's wisteria. I think I knew that. I don't know. Doesn't matter. I now know. So that's really all that matters. But that is what I'm drawing up at the top of the page to bring the theme into the habit tracker spread. And I just kind of keep those drawings going across the top of the other page as well, because this is going to be my playlist page, which always seems very blank and very empty and boring when I set it up. Because what I do with this page is at the end of the month, I just write down all of the songs and albums that I was listening to in that month. So it's always very boring when I'm setting it up, but I wanted to bring the theme into the playlist page as well. So I once again have the wisteria going across the top of the page. And I also decided to, again, bring the little bee back and draw that in the bottom corner as well. And normally when I do this spread, I take the time to talk about what I was listening to in the previous month, but obviously April was completely taken over by the Torture Poets Department. That's pretty much all I was listening to. And before that, Espresso by Sabrina Carpenter, Song of the Summer, and then we have a depressing album, Girlhood is a Spectrum. Thank you to my favorite blondies. <laughs> Now we're moving on to the final spreads for this month setup, which is going to be my weekly spreads for the first two weeks of the month. So I'm once again drawing the flowers up at the top of the page because I wanted to bring the theme into the weekly spreads somehow. But again, I never want the drawings and everything to take away from the actual functionality of the spread, especially with these weekly spreads where I need space to write down what's going on and my to-do list and things like that. So I just draw a couple of the flowers up at the top and then just kind of divide the page into six different sections. I create one little box for the weekend and I kind of just separate it like that. I feel like I try to change up a little bit how I do my weekly spreads every month, but not too much where it's completely different and also again, not functional. So I feel like this kind of setup is going to work well for me. And I just have the first week of the month over on the left-hand side. And then obviously the second week on the right-hand side. So after this, I will create the weekly spreads for the rest of the month, but I just wanted to show you what these first two were going to look like, what the weekly spreads this month were going to be looking like, but that is the final spread for this month's setup. So that is it for my bullet journal setup for the month of May, and here's a flip through of how everything turned out. I'm pretty happy with this theme. I'm very happy with how the Bridgerton house turned out on the main title page, and I think it's just going to be a fun theme to use throughout the month when I'm really excited for the new season of the show and also watching the new season. Definitely let me know if you use bullet journal what theme you decided to go with in the month of May, but that is going to be it for my May bullet journal setup. So thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one.